the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. In this video, we will discuss the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. We will talk about this in terms of both conceptual and mathematical terms, as well as doing two example problems on it. Let's first define the principle. The Uncertainty Principle states that the more precisely we know the momentum of an object, the less precisely we know its position, and vice versa. So in other words, if we knew exactly where an object was, we would have no idea how fast it was going. Or, if we knew the exact momentum of an object, we would have no clue where it was. Of course, in chemistry there isn't any absolutes, but rather a minimum limit. This says that our uncertainty in momentum, multiplied by our uncertainty in position, must be greater than h over 4 pi. Since we can neither know momentum or position with exact certainty, we can also get information about the uncertainty in velocity. We can do this by filling in m times the uncertainty in velocity for our uncertainty in momentum. So remember, this means that even if our measurements were done perfectly, the best that you could possibly get for the uncertainties in position and momentum would be h over 4 pi. This is an innate characteristic of the universe and isn't because our measurements aren't good enough. It is because of the nature of the universe itself that this happens. Let's talk through some conceptual examples. What happens if your momentum uncertainty decreases? Well, if you're at the quantum mechanical limit and you want to know your momentum with more certainty or to a more precise value, that means that your position uncertainty must in fact increase. Similarly, because most times we know our mass with great certainty, what would happen to the uncertainty in position if your uncertainty in velocity decreases? Overall, this would decrease the certainty in your momentum, which given that you're near the theoretical limit, must mean that delta x increases. Now let's do an example. An electron has an uncertainty in its velocity of 1.05 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. And I ask you to find its minimum uncertainty in position. Here, we'll start with the formula from the last slide. We'll need to fill in m delta v into our momentum. We can then fill in our uncertainty in velocity and solve for x. Let's rearrange. And now filling in our numbers. For our mass, we fill in our mass of an electron, which is a number that you can look up or on an exam you would be given, giving us our final answer, 5.52 times 10 to the negative 10th meters. There is a silly chemistry joke that goes along with this principle. It says that Heisenberg was pulled over by a police officer who asked, do you know how fast you are going? And Heisenberg responds by saying, nope, but I know exactly where I am. This is a silly joke, but it does make use of an idea that is worth talking about. The concept that even for large objects, the uncertainty principle is technically at work. But then the question becomes, why does it only seem to matter for things that are in the quantum realm? Why don't we talk about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in terms of our desks or our chairs? To do this, let's look at a problem made from this joke. It says that we're pulled over by a police officer for speeding and we try to escape a ticket by claiming that if he knew where we were, which he must, he can't possibly know how fast you are going. The officer, who appears to be skilled at quantum mechanics, says, well, I knew where you were, with, where, where you were within 0.5 meters, and your car weighs 1,300 kilograms, so I know your velocity by approximately. Let's decide whether this would be a good excuse to get out of a ticket. We'll do this the exact same way that we did the problem for the electron. We'll start by our same equation. Once again, filling mv in for momentum. This time, we'll be solving for v. We can now fill our numbers in. to get our final answer. So given that this is an incredibly small value in comparison to your actual speed, and that this difference, the difference in magnitude isn't going to make any difference in your ticket. A ticket of going 20 miles over the speed limit is the same as going 20 plus 8.1 times 10 to the negative 38 meters per second over the speed limit. So obviously when we're talking about cars, quantum mechanics, just doesn't make a big enough difference to matter. 
However, as you saw in the previous problem, when we're talking about electrons, that dif does make a difference in the properties of the matter. Let's see one more interesting conceptual issue that arises because of the uncertainty principle. I want you to start by revisiting the Dr. Quantum video that I linked you to in previous videos. Last time, I asked you to watch this video. We were focusing on the double split experiment and how it showed us the wave nature of light. However, the latter part of this video talks about another phenomenon. Start about three minutes and 40 seconds in for the sake of the following discussion. And you can just review the fir first part if you need to remember what the double split experiment was. Take a moment and do this now and then come back. Let's summarize and expand on that. It's an illustration of the uncertainty principle by using the double split experiment. If we do not attempt to measure what hole the species goes through during a double split experiment, it creates an interference pattern just as we talked about in earlier videos. This is like a wave. However, if we measure the species in any way trying to see which hole it goes through and therefore determining exactly where it is, the wave function collapses and we get what we would expect from a purely particle-like species. This is what's shown on the right. We can't know both at the exact same time because the act of measuring the species changes it. And this gives us a clear visual representation of being able to either visualize the particle or the wave-like nature of light in small quantum objects. Each of these dual natures of the quantum mechanical entity is associated with a measurable entity. The wave nature is associated with a known velocity, where the particle like is known is associated with a known position. We have now discussed the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and talked about calculations that we could do with it, both in the quantum realm and in the non-quantum realm, as well as talking about some conceptual examples and how it's related to the double split experiment, or more precisely, how the double split experiment can show us how the Heisenberg uncertainty principle acts.